With their historic journeys to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, NASA's twin Voyager probes launched in 1977 stunned the whole world. Two of the most amazing spacecraft ever launched would never have taken flight if the stars hadn't lined up. The four largest planets in our solar system were the stars in this instance. They were progressively spinning into an array that hadn't happened since Thomas Jefferson's presidency in the early 19th century, about 60 years prior. The unusual planetary set piece first went completely overlooked. Gary Flandreau, a PhD candidate in aeronautics at the California Institute of Technology, was the first to draw attention to it. The 15 days of one another, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, which were identical in every way, were launched in the summer of 1977. In August 2012, Voyager 1 made history by traveling into interstellar space for the first time. Debris that was ejected millions of years ago when the nearby stars died has filled this space between the stars. Both spacecraft are still providing scientific data about their surroundings via the Deep Space Network (DSN). But after years of circling in orbit, something appears to be amiss with one of the probes. Come along as we explore the remarkable Voyager spacecraft's journey and the fascinating communications it still sends to Earth from a great distance. What alarming data has this crashing spacecraft offered NASA then? How could this Voyager 1 suddenly act strangely? You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. The Start The first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, had been launched by the Soviet Union only eight years earlier, making 1965 the dawn of the era of space exploration. Finding the most effective method to send a space probe to Jupiter or possibly even out to Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune was the responsibility of Flandro, who was employed part-time at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. He plotted the orbital paths of those massive planets using a pencil, a favored precision instrument of 20th century engineers, and made an amazing discovery. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, all four would be strung together like pearls on a necklace in a long arc with Earth. As a result of this coincidence, the spacecraft may gain speed from the gravitational pull at each large planet in the past, as it being pulled alongside by an invisible rope that suddenly broke, sending the probe flying on its course. Flandreau projected that the journey duration between Earth and Neptune would decrease from 30 years to 12 years as a result of the frequent gravity aids. One drawback, though, the alignment only took place once every 176 years. A spaceship would need to be launched by the mid-1970s in order to reach the planets while the lineup was still in effect. Voyagers 1 and 2 were created as a result. The journey. Both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 left Earth in 1977. They weren't the first spacecraft to reach the nearest of the big planets. That honor belonged to the Pioneers 10 and 11. Despite being more developed than the Pioneers, the Voyagers produced a number of incredible discoveries. Voyager 1, which arrived at Jupiter sooner and traveled a shorter distance than Voyager 2 in 1979, discovered that the planet's lovely moon, Io, had volcanic volcanoes. Voyager 1 passed Saturn in 1980, examining the intricate details of the rings and finding the first nitrogen atmosphere outside of Earth, close to Titan. A more beautiful path was taken by Voyager 2, which made stops at Jupiter and Saturn in 1979 and 1981 respectively, before passing by Uranus and Neptune in 1986 and 1989. The spacecraft then started to move in the direction of other stars. Astronomers assert that the beginning of the interstellar medium occurs at the termination of the solar wind, the sun's outflow of charged particles. This ionized gas or plasma pushes against the colder, denser galactic plasma flowing around it, much like a stone impeding a stream. The terms heliosphere and heliopause are used to describe the hole created by the sun, which like how tropopause is used to describe the top of the troposphere on Earth. At the time Voyager was launched, we really didn't know how far out the heliopause was according to Don Garnett, a Voyager researcher at the University of Iowa in Iowa City. Heliopause has been thought to be five times closer to Jupiter, or even closer to Earth than it is to the Sun. As Garnett had predicted 20 years earlier, Voyager 1 finally reached its objective on August 25, 2012, at a distance of 121.6 astronomical units, or nearly four times the distance to Neptune. But the controversy surrounding the crossing was so intense that it took NASA an additional 13 months to proclaim it a success. Voyager 1 did discover some signs that it had passed the heliopause, though. The disappearance of the high-energy solar wind particles means that the remaining solar wind was also left behind. In addition, cosmic rays from outside the solar system, which the heliosphere partially blocks, rose stronger following Voyager's passing. However, this knowledge wasn't enough to convince many scientists. There were two problems. Due to a malfunction, Voyager 1's plasma instrument was unable to record the rise in particle density that occurred when the spacecraft departed the heliosphere and reached interstellar space. Second, contrary to what was anticipated, 
The magnetic field outside the heliosphere did not point in a different direction. Crimicus claimed that because nature hadn't read the theorist's publications, it simply wasn't aware that the magnetic field direction was intended to be altered. It is not yet known why the magnetic fields inside and outside the heliosphere coincide. The Sun contributed to Voyager's success, as Voyager 1 accelerated through plasma. Solar storms that had earlier broken out surprised it, causing electrons to vibrate and generate radio waves that the spacecraft recorded. Frequency measurements of these radio waves revealed that Voyager had actually entered a much denser zone, a shield of protection, the heliosphere. Researchers must look into this puzzle and offer a solution utilizing data from Voyager and other discoveries. The idea that heliopause fluctuates is now new. Over the past 10 years, researchers have analyzed data from a variety of sources to understand its dynamic nature. This boundary's location and behavior have been better understood thanks to NASA's interstellar boundary explorer, IBEX spacecraft, which tracks energetic neutral atom emissions. The only spacecraft to leave the heliosphere was Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Only direct observations at a particular location in space and time are transmitted by the Voyager probe. IBEX completes their statistics by providing more context. Models that predict how their heliopause may alter in the future have been developed by scientists using this knowledge. The heliopause is a border that is continually shifting, in contrast to other solar winds and interstellar medium, which push and pull against one another. Data from more recent heliopause studies, however, contradicts past findings. The IBEX satellite, for instance, found that the brightening of energetic neutral atoms ENAs in 2014, which at first suggested asymmetry in the heliopause over a period of months, was incompatible with the models as they are currently. According to the data from Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft, the heliopause appears to have migrated significantly in a short period of time, which may assist to explain the massive time gap between the entry of the two probes into interstellar space in 2012 and 2018 respectively. Yet the heliopause shifts, casting doubt on hypotheses put forth on account for its stability. The study's findings were detailed in a publication that was published on October 10th. These differences in their opinion were intriguing and perhaps even provocative. Scientists expect to learn more about the heliopause using NASA's interstellar mapping and acceleration probe, a new and improved satellite that will launch in 2025 and be able to detect ENAs. What is causing the heliopause's surprising behavior is still a mystery. In May of this year, the Attitude Articulation and Control System AACS of Voyager 1 began transmitting garbled data instead of the usual updates on the status and health of the spacecraft. The AACS keeps a high-gain antenna pointed at Earth. This behavior is comparable to electronic aphasia, a disorder that impairs speech intelligibility, another intriguing study that needs more information to be understood fully. It's possible that the data were chosen at random or they don't precisely reflect the spacecraft's actual state. Even though NASA has said at the time that the AACS may have been in an aberrant state, the engineers were perplexed by the fact that updates from the spacecraft Voyager 1 appeared to be in fine shape despite the strange situation, indicating that the antenna was still pointed at Earth and not where the AACS said it was. The ship's radio communications were still steady and strong. Notwithstanding the strange behavior of the AACS, Voyager 1's science systems continued to gather and transmit data as usual. Whatever the AACS issue was, it didn't cause it to trigger a fault prevention system that would have put the spacecraft into safe mode in the event of a breakdown. Luckily, NASA experts were able to identify and resolve the problem. The AACS had begun broadcasting its telemetry data using an onboard computer that had long since broken, resulting in the data being jumbled. It was discovered after the command to the AACS was transmitted. The next challenging challenge would be to determine what caused the AACS to switch systems in the first place. According to NASA, it's possible that other onboard computer gave the system the incorrect instruction. Although it is believed that Voyager 1's health is not now in grave danger, the root cause of this issue must be found and fixed in order to avert further worries. Voyager 1 has been traveling through interstellar space for the past 10 years, leaving behind the Sun's magnetic field, which had previously shielded it from cosmic rays and other forms of interstellar radiation. The magnetic field of the Earth similarly protects individuals from solar radiation and high-energy particles. Without this defense, it's probable that high-speed energetic particles are causing memory issues in Voyager 1's onboard computer circuits. Notwithstanding these difficulties, the Voyager 1 mission is still functioning more than 45 years after it was intended to. A prestigious goodbye. Everything is good after all, right? No matter how well a mission may have gone, there comes a time when difficult choices must be made in order to allow room for further advancement. After 45 long years in outer space, it appears that the Voyagers have reached their destination. It might be time to end the conversation. Due to the current fault and malfunction in its onboard processors and AACS Voyager 1 will have to be retired. The American Space Agency has begun bidding goodbye to the probe and turning down its equipment. It's incredible that even before the development of modern technology, humanity was able to launch probes into space that survived for such a very long time. The two identical probes that were launched simultaneously and offered us some of the closest images of our solar system's two largest planets 
have already completed their missions. In 2030, the probes will be taken off their current course. NASA is extremely happy with the performance of both Voyager spacecrafts and notes that they have operated 10 times longer than expected. The first Voyager probe still has four working parts, whereas the second has five. The plutonium that powers them is now degrading, so they won't be able to sustain them for very long. The battery's output is declining by 4 watts annually, which has left NASA with few options. In 2019, NASA scientists shut off the heater for the cosmic ray detector, a crucial part of the probe's operation, as they gradually started to degrade its components. With its magnetometer and the plasma science instrument likely being the last two, NASA will decommission the probes piece by piece. The extra heat produced by the spacecraft's processors keeps those two warm, whereas the other two are suspended from a 13-meter fiberglass boom, which will likely take the longest to cool. Another reason to abandon the endeavor is how far the Voyagers are from Earth. Currently, it takes Voyager 1 22 hours and Voyager 2 18 hours to transmit a radio signal to Earth. As the probes move further from Earth, communications become increasingly challenging as the latency grows by 3 to 4 light seconds every day. The Earth is a busy place with signals flying all over the place, making it harder and harder to hear the whispers from the spaceship. In light of the current system bug, the veracity of the fuzzy information obtained is further questioned. The two probes' worth cannot be understated, though. These one-of-a-kind perspectives into the vast, largely uncharted space were priceless. It will be another 300 years before humans are able to fully exit the solar system, despite the fact that the astronomers may soon be able to go into interstellar space. What are your thoughts on this momentous finale of an illustrious era? Do let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you at the next one. At the next one.